Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from scottspacelessons.com and in this lesson I'm going to share with you the two main reasons that bass players really struggle with their fretting hand technique. Let's check it out. Okay, in this lesson, I want to talk about your fretting hand. Now, just I just want to tell you about, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I do wear gloves. It's because I've got a medical, medical condition called focal dystonia. Um, you don't want to really know about it. Just know that it doesn't affect my tone at all. So don't go out there and buy a glove, okay? I wear it because I need it. Um, so, fretting hand technique. Um, the, I see this all the time, that people... Are, are, are constantly troubled or challenged by using their pinky finger, okay? And they think that their pinky finger is, you know, uh, dysfunctional and, you know, that, that for some reason I or other bass players that do use their pinky finger, they've got some sort of like different physiology or something like that. And it's actually not true. You know, the pinky finger, yes, it's the weakest of the bunch, you know, um, it's got less muscle mass than, than the other fingers and it is codependent. It works kind of together with the ring finger. But, you know, we're all kind of made the same and, and I have that as well, but I can use my little finger really well. And it's because <clears throat> of the positioning of my left hand. Now, just a bit of a, a caveat, a word, word of warning when you're doing this, when your technique or changing technique, it's going to feel weird for a while, okay? At least a month. So if I'm, you know, you're trying to get this pinky working and it's not right now and you're trying to use these positions that I tell you about in this video, if it feels weird to start with, it's going to feel weird. Don't worry about it. Just keep on. Essentially, you're having to reprogram your brain to send different electrical signals to your hand than it has been for the last however many months or years you've been playing. And the brain, it's a really stubborn piece of kit, okay? So just, you know, you've got to bully it into submission. You know, you've got to keep on, keep on um, practicing these technique changes. So the first thing is what I, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll know it already. It's when this part of the hand touches the uh, this part of the fingerboard. Now, as soon as th uh, this part of the hand touches the fingerboard, you'll see I can't open. I don't have that nice curve, okay? Let me just take my glove off. With my f if, if my hand here is against, and you'll see lots of players playing, you know, they go down to the, go to that, down to that G string, and their hand is still connected with the bottom of the fretboard. Now, when you're down here, if I do this, I, I'm struggling really hard there to open up this, you know, this space, this gap between those two fingers. But as soon as I move away and bring the hand round like this, you'll see that it opens up and it's nice and open. I've got a nice open space between each finger. And all I'm doing is just bringing the hand round. There's no tension there or anything. Again, I'm gonna hold the fretboard like this and then suddenly I'm just drop, drop these knuckles up. Drop these knuckles down, okay? So imagine that you want your, imagine there's an inv invisible line across these knuckles. You want that to be exactly the same in line with the bottom of the, the fingerboard, not a, a diagonal like that, okay? Because then you're not going to be able to use that finger, that little finger, because it's just going to be cramped up. So first thing, the first thing you need to make sure is that you've got that nice open relaxed feel between the fingers and you do that by making sure that the knuckles are in a line against you know the bottom of the fingerboard and as I move down like that you'll just see that the shape of the hand always stays the same yeah so that's reason number one keep this part off the fingerboard reason number two is the thumb now what people tend to do and I've seen this, you know, it's one of those little little technique things that kind of, it's hard to see upon first watching somebody because you're kind of looking at the front of the fingerboard. So um, teachers, I'm sure there's a load of teachers watching this video as well. You know, check your students for this because this is a sneaky little thing they do. Their thumb will, they'll push it out to the side like this, okay, when they're playing. 
It won't be behind where it needs to be behind the fingers. It'll be over here. Now watch this. So if I hold my hand like this, I can open it, you know, open it, close it, you know, like holding a grapefruit or something, ball. I can open them really nice and easily. But if I put this thumb out to the side, I can't do anything. It, it paralyzes you being able to open your fingers at all. So, and like, look, I just cannot move. I'll move it again, there we go. Really easy, put the thumb out the side and it stops it completely. So, bring that onto the base and even if you, you know, even if you've got, you know, you are keeping this away from the base. If your thumb is there, you know, over here, it just means you're not going to be able to get that movement. Again, I just can't, I can't get it. Just all the fingers scrumple up. Scrumple? Is that, is that a word, Dima? It's a new word. It's a new word. So make sure that your thumb is behind or in between your index and your middle fingers, okay? That's where it needs to be, in between, okay? So you're playing like this. As soon as it goes over here, you're gonna get this, it's just gonna completely paralyze all those, all that movement, and you're gonna, it's gonna be like running with your shoelaces tied together, okay? So that's the two problems. One, this part's on the bottom of the fingerboard and making you go, your knuckles be like this, you just can't open it, and then put into the mix that your, your thumb's over here and you just end up with this crazy, you know, restricted, fretted hand. So, the two things, <laughs> I forgot what I was saying there. The, uh, so, make sure your thumb is right behind your index and your and middle finger. I like mine just to sit right in between. And make sure that these knuckles uh, straight to the bottom of the fingerboard at all times. And you'll see, I'm just gonna put my glove on. I tell you guys, I go through a lot of gloves. Amazon, you know, I think I should have shares in Amazon, the amount of gloves I've bought through them. Um, so if you watch me play, oh. Always got that line. And my finger, my thumb is always behind. It's just always in between my index and middle finger. So go check this out, see if it helps you out with that little finger. You can you can do it if you haven't been using this little finger, trust me, it's great when you get it working because you know it's like having an extra arm. Imagine if you had an extra arm helping you out, it'd be really good help, wouldn't it? It'd be great help. So if you've enjoyed this uh, lesson, make sure you click like, and also make sure you go to scottsbasslessons.com. We've got a ton of free lessons just like that over there, just like this over there. And also make sure you uh, sign up for the Scott's Bass Lessons Toolkit as well. It's a free resource I've put together, including backing tracks, mini courses, um, we've got a buyer's guide on there, base buyer's guide, where Chris May comes in from Overwater Bases and tells us about the things that you need to know when buying a base. Ton of free stuff, and as it's free stuff, it's all for free. So go check that out. There'll be a link somewhere on this page and below as well in the description. So take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed.